recently somebody sent me an email uh, with a really, really great message. And that message is this. Hi there, Julie. I feel like I'm stuck in my current work and life. And I'm writing to ask if long distance energy <laughs> healing is a thing. Is it real? Is it true? Or is it just a scam? Thank you for letting me know with love, William. So I have, the, per <laughs> I have the perfect guest to respond to that question. My guest is my dear friend, Diane Goldner, who I've known for, gosh, I don't know, 20 some years, I think now. And she's a real expert in the field of healing, long distance and, you know, hands on in person, in person healing. And so I've invited her back so that we can dive in to this meaty question of is it really a thing and is it true so diane welcome 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 it's great to have you join me again on talking true i am so glad to be here and this is a topic that is so near and dear to my heart so <laughs> i i'm laughing because i have so much i want to share about this so the first thing i want to say is i used to be um an investigative reporter. So I stumbled upon healing as a reporter. And I want to say, I remember when people would tell me they could do a long distance healing. And I thought, yeah, and I've got a bridge to sell you. Because <laughs> I just thought that is just the most ridiculous thing. How could that ever, you know, I thought, okay, you're pulling my leg. This is a, a pull too far. But it turns out, it really is not only real, it is incredibly powerful. So, um, you know, I, I'll just share once. I mean, this is a long, long time ago. I was working on my book. I was living in New York. I, I was in LA on assignment for both the magazine I was working for and for my book. And I got horrific migraine headache. <laughs> and I called one of the healers I knew because I thought, God knows, maybe somehow they could help me. They weren't even home. But a short while later, I could feel this incredible energy running through my whole body. It was like a miracle. It was um, like bliss and grace going through my body. And, um, and my headache went away, of course. I fell asleep. I woke up. My headache was gone. And this was one of my first experiences of long distance healing. So, of course, after that, <laughs> you know, when I talked, I knew somebody had done something because it was so palpable and strong. And that is one of the things I want to say, you know, when I do a healing, you know, I'm long distance, I could be in LA, somebody could be in New York, honestly, somebody could be on Mars, it doesn't really matter. So I've done long distance healings with people pretty much probably on every continent except Antarctica, maybe. <laughs> um, and not everybody, but you know, the thing is, people can feel me. So I remember once I was working with a retired CEO um, and, you know, we were working on this and that. And then um, I was out of town and he had some kind of emergency and I did. He, I said, let me do a healing. And he was like, well, OK. <laughs> so, of course, he didn't believe in long distance healing. Who would? Right. And um you know, when I finished the healing and I called him, he was like, oh my God, Diane, it was just like I was on your table. He was in shock. And I understand that feeling. So anyway, that's just an introduction. So the, it's really trippy that you can feel somebody from across the country when they're doing a healing. It's just like really mind boggling. And of course, it opens up a lot of questions, doesn't it? Yes, <laughs> for, sure, for sure it does. <laughs> <laughs> so how I guess one of the questions I would ask is how could you even train to do that you know yes. how okay that Okay. So we'll start with my training. I now teach. I probably am one of the only people that I know of who I specialize in teaching long distance healing and it really started during COVID um maybe before but i mean covid is when it really took off because we couldn't get together in person and my students wanted to continue but anyway how do you learn so when i was learning long distance healing first i was learning learning hands on healing right 
And then one of the women that I had interviewed for my book, who I'd become friendly with and who my friend Gerda, who really became not only a friend, but a, a mentor and challenged me at every step of the way. She was like, why don't you do a long distance healing for me? I was like, I couldn't do that. <laughs> It's like, are you kidding me? She said, well, why don't you just try? If you can't do it, why, what's the harm in trying? So I did the healing and um, I was so flustered afterward. And I was like, Gerda, I didn't really get anything. And she said, really? Are you sure? And I said, well, I just had this, I, this came through and that came through. And she said, that's exactly what I'm working on right now. And I was just floored. <laughs> so that was the beginning of my training. So one of the things is learning to trust because you're working at a very high level and with what we might call subtle information. But of course, when we say subtle, you know, sometimes it's not sometimes subtle can be much more powerful than somebody yelling and screaming, right? Sometimes you can whisper something in, right? So... Yeah. So, wow. mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, there's a lot more to it when I, you know, when I teach people, um, I, we go through a really deep process of um, connecting to your energy centers, learning to work with them, learning to experience what your energy feels like. And then slowly, when you bring somebody else in, you can start to perceive how it changes your energy field. That's one thing. Mm hmm so so there's really no limits in terms of who you can work with and how you can work with them right is what you right. say <laughs> right <laughs> um yeah I'm laughing you know what very early on I want to be really discreet here um I was doing a healing for somebody um a current boss you know magazine person and somebody I used to work with came in and I was very inexperienced <laughs> and I was like, well, I didn't, he didn't ask. I, I haven't asked for permission. I, I can't really do a healing for him, but he was so insistent. I finally had to give my attention to this person and, and offer light and peace and harmony, whatever it was. And um, a few days later, I picked up the paper and this person was involved in a very big situation. I don't want to get into any more detail than that, but it made it into the papers and it was obviously something he was very stressed about. And, um, and he was calling out for help and I would guess I was the one that got dispatched. Wow. <laughs> so, That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's something. Yeah. yeah. So I know you've had that experience where somebody comes to you, you know, Yes, yes. Um, yeah. Either I can feel them in my own. And I think it's true of everybody, actually. It's just maybe that most people don't pay attention, you know, and it can be as simple as having an, uh, having an impulse or a prompt to call somebody just to check in on them to see how they're doing and all of those things, because that is really a message from your higher self and their higher self communicating and, and 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 I'm guessing that that's kind of the mechanic so to speak of how the beginning part of, of uh, doing long distance healing works right yes. Connect at that level yes I mean the beginning of a heal I mean do you want to talk about how I actually connect or is that yes. I mean, yeah, so I many think... different things <laughs> that I would like to talk about so in the very beginning I you know first I I run through all of my energy centers. I do an invocation. Um, I bring in whatever spiritual support feels appropriate. And, and then I call in the other person and their higher self. And we're basically meeting on a dimension beyond time and space. And these dimensions are real. I mean, we're laughing, but they're just they may be, they're more real than the physical dimension. To me, yes, what's happening on this level is more significant. And, um, and I want to say that, you know, we talk about it as the spiritual realm, my own theory, and I know some scientists, some really brilliant scientists who um, concur with this. It's 
another word would be the quantum dimension. So what's happening in what we call quantum physics is a dimension and it's connected to the spiritual dimension. But anyway, so I connect in and then um, I set the intention for the healing, whatever the person uh, we've talked before that I start the actual transmission. And um, my own way of working is almost emerging. Um, I would say that I bring that person in so close, they're like overlaid on my energy field. So I can experience my energy and their energy. And it's so intense, I'll feel things in my own body. And um, and then we'll go from there. Um, and the thing that enables me to do a long distance healing is, um, is that merging. So I'm both my independent self but I've become one, we've become one with each other. So I'm not doing a healing. I'm inviting that person to um, resonate with the vibration that they need. Um, so if they're in fear, it might be releasing fear. Let, I'll give you an example. This was one of the most dramatic cases to this date that I've ever done. So it involved a, a, a boy maybe he was eight or nine, who was playing hide and seek on the roof of the third story building. And he fell off the roof. And I got a phone call, not from his mother, but from the, you know, a neighbor um, who asked me if I would do a healing for this boy that he was, they didn't know if he would make it. And she said, you know, you can't even go to the hospital. I was like, that's not a problem for me. <laughs> <laughs> she said he's so fragile they won't let anybody in his room other than the parents I said fine I said you know I'm going to start right now and I went in and um you know when they found him he had blood coming out of his ear and he was of course unconscious and he had a broken pelvis and I went in this was a very difficult healing they're often full of joy but this was really challenging he was in such a state of fear and um, so I had to hold that state, you know, be present with that. And it took me probably over an hour to calm him down, just to calm him down. And when he was in that frozen fear, he was frozen. His energy was literally frozen. You know, when they say frozen in fear, it's literal. Mm -hmm. And then um, and then I touched his head. Now, mind you, this is long distance. I touched his head and he went back into that state of fear because his head was in so much pain. And I had to calm him down all over again. <laughs> and then I was able to work on his head. And, and then I went to work on his pelvis because he had broken his pelvis too. And I was told that he didn't, I didn't need to do that. And I probably did a follow-up healing and that boy walked out of the hospital six weeks later just fine. Wow. Yeah. And, you know, I, I wouldn't even say, you know, I saved his life. All I would say is that if I hadn't been able to bring him out of that state of fear, he would not have been able to heal. So it was a very important, um, and, you know, there aren't that many Sometimes you have to work on that higher level to do that kind of work for somebody. Um, yeah. So anyway, I feel like I'm talking and talking. I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's great. It's really helpful because, you know, everything you've shared is is actually the way I work as well. I know. When I'm I know. Doing reading, <laughs> when I'm doing readings or helping somebody with, you know, shadow work and whatever, because because I connect in. And then it's almost like there's a merging that takes place. And so I'm essentially reading that information as if I'm reading my my very own self and what's yes. happening inside myself and inside the psyche and the emotions and so on and so forth. Um, because because there's kind of no distance that that like the idea of separation isn't there anymore. And um, it's so intimate and so immediate and so um, easy yes. to to speak to um that it's just kind of like second nature um yeah it's so beautiful. it's essentially the same it's essentially the same kind of work yes uh, 
and and it does work. I mean, it, as we've we both had, you know, endless evidence of that over the last I don't know how many decades. Oh yeah, no, it's right. incredible. And that, so, and that union is a really joyful experience, even when somebody's in a difficult state. Um, there's still a lot of um, joy and bliss. So with, even with that boy, you know, where I really had to, I mean, steal myself in a sense because it was so intense. Um, but still, there was connection, and um, and I maybe I just knew if I just was patient, it would eventually he would eventually come into complete union. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, you know, and also what happens is, and, and maybe it's a bit more difficult with a, with a child, but certainly with an, a, another adult, <laughs> when you can speak to what you're seeing in terms of the condition, whether it's emotional, psychological, physical or whatever, the, the, the client that you're working with, their capacity to resonate and see that and know that to be true for themselves is really really what does the work more than anything, yeah. right? Because they become their own uh, inner physicians or re they recognize their own inner physicians. So well, say. you are able, you communicate what you see directly. I do too. You know, after I do that tr long distance transmission, normally I would tell somebody what um, I experienced. And in this case, I did send a message through the neighbor that this child was going to um, be extremely agitated. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and not to worry because they were going to, whatever I had experienced in the healing was going to have to play out for. So, um, and that's exactly what happened when he started coming out of a coma. But what I was going to say is, um, a lot of the time I'm communicating directly to the other person's higher self, mm -hmm. um, and sometimes, like in the case of that boy, I don't, you know, not everything gets communicated at the personality level. I think mm -hmm. when you do those readings, which are so amazing, you know, you convey it all in so much detail. It's just the most wonderful experience because <laughs> um, I've had readings with you. Um, and um so a lot of times I'll tell a person it's going to take about a week for the healing to unfold. And um, and what I'm saying is usually the tip of the iceberg. Because mm -hmm. um, when I do a healing, I'm, I'm, I'm showing them a new energy. I know you are too when you speak and talk to them and maybe energetically also. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, and then it's whether they can hold it, absorb it and hold it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so do you get, um, you know, as coming back to the email I got um, yeah. just yesterday, actually, <laughs> which is great timing, <laughs> but um, with respect to somebody who feels like he or she is stuck in their working life, for example, or, you know, not yeah. able to live on purpose or whatever the story is. Do you get many clients that ask for help with that? I do. I get, all, you know, everything you can imagine. I think um, I've worked with people on all kinds, I mean, even business deals. Um, you know, everything is energy and mm -hmm. everything, as you know, and everything that we experience is because of the way our energy is. And as soon as you, this is the crazy part, right? As soon as you change your energy, the whole world changes. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes. yes, yes. <laughs> You know, the, the way I often put it is it's it's like when you fall in love, you know, when you really fall deeply in love, it's like everywhere you look and everyone you look at, you just feel this Beautiful, love. Beautiful, right? right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. So, um, you know, I've worked with, um, you know, I worked with one woman who would get upset and she, as she would say, she couldn't hold her pole steady. <laughs> you you understand that though intuitively right you know yes, she just yes. couldn't stay steady you know most she would get all you know like this inside emotionally um and um 
So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just, that's one thing that's coming up, but yes, I work on all kinds of things. I actually think in some ways, well, not in some ways, in all ways, this is probably, listen, when you're in pain, you want to get out of pain. Yes. So when people call me and they're having a physical problem, I mean, my heart goes out to anyone, but almost always there are underlying patterns, emotional patterns, belief patterns, mm-hmm. um, and, you know, confusions about alignment um, spiritually. So when I'm healing the physical, I'm healing these other levels. You, you, you have almost not always, not in every case, but almost always. Like the example of that little boy, it wasn't really, why were you up on the roof? It was just helping him Mm -hmm. in that physical, what he needed. Mm -hmm. Uh, But a lot of, um, uh, you know, I'd say 95% of the time, it's more than that. It's more than the physical thing somebody is presenting to me. And some people are wise enough to call me without a physical issue. <laughs> yeah. So, so I'm guessing, you know, like me, I've, I've, I've worked with people who, for example, um, have had physical con- chronic conditions, let's say, you know, low back problem that just is not getting any better no matter what they do. And I start looking and working with them and I go, oh my God, it's because they're in this stuck in this just God awful relationship where they're really, really unhappy or in a work situation where they don't feel valued or what, you know, whatever the story is yeah. about that. Um, because it's, it, you know, it's the physical body expressing their, their, their frustration and, and not being able to maybe see it or, or have the courage to change it. And I'm guessing you've got anecdotes around that, right? Oh my God, it happens all the time. I mean, I, I remember, um, I mean, this, again, this is years ago, this uh, gentleman came in um his back was so seized up, you know, in pain. I mean, he was just in horrific pain. And, and it was just so clear to me as soon as we started talking that, um, you know, his, um, he'd he'd spent the weekend cleaning out his mother-in-law's country house or something. (laughs) And he said she was so rude to him as always. (laughs) You know, that, that pain in his back was really his anger. Mm-hmm. you know, it being treated that way and not standing up for himself. And as soon as we touched on that, it released, you know, he was fine the next day. So that's one example. Um, you know, I, I, there are so many other examples. I can't, a woman came in to um, see me. She couldn't, um, her hands were atrophying. You know, she couldn't open jars. I mean, she was in her early fifties and she couldn't open a jar. And, um, of course the doctors, you know, didn't know why and didn't have any idea what to do. It was just something she was going to have to live with. And a friend of her said, why don't you, you know, go see Diane and see what she can do. (laughs) And, you know, sometimes there's a precipitating event. I'm sure you find this too. Mm -hmm. And I, I said to her, I said, you know, did anything happen? Like maybe in the year or two before your hands started, you know, atrophying? And and she said, no. And then it was like a light bulb went off. It was like, you know, one of those things in the cartoon. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And she said, oh my God. She said, you know, my husband had a skydiving accident. So she had seen her husband parachuting. And the parachute didn't open open completely. I know it was horrific. Right. And Mm -hmm. he did survive. Uh, Maybe he got caught in the treetops and whatever. He did survive, but he was, it took like about a year for him to Mm -hmm. recover from his injuries. And um, so I still didn't know what the answer exactly was, but, you know, I, I started running energy into her hands and, you know, I cannot make this stuff up. So as soon as I started, you'll probably, you probably have already guessed this, but um, I heard that she just, uh, you know, the, the idea of him dying was more than she can handle. Yes. Wow. And yeah, so all the time our bodies are um, talking to us. And unfortunately, when we don't listen, it just gets, it escalates, you know, it goes from a whisper to like a, 
you know, a little louder and then it gets yes. louder. Yes. <laughs> I'm laughing because I've had that experience myself when you just can't handle what you have to do. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, I remember I, sh I shared this in one of my books, actually, but I remember, oh, I don't know how many years ago, 10 or 15 years ago, I started to get this severe, severe pain in my shoulder and didn't know what it was and then found out, you know, and I went to the doctors and so on, ran some tests that it was frozen shoulder. And, <laughs> and of course, you know, I was, I was long in the practice of, of inquiring, you know, what is this here to show me? And of course, the, it, was, it was so obvious. It was, you know, I was carrying a lot of weight work-wise on my shoulders yeah. and was exhausted. Um, so anyway, what happened was I cleared that, you know, the right shoulder. And then I think six months later, I got, I got the same in the left shoulder. And, uh, <laughs> so I realized, I think there's still some more work to be done around that. <laughs> Cause I didn't want and to that's when you're working on it. When you don't work on it, that's when you really can run into yeah. trouble, you know, or when you're working on it and you can't solve it. And I say that with. Um, you know, I've been there, you know, where you're working on it, working on it, and you just, whatever it is that you are being called to do, you just can't, you're just not ready to do it. Um, mm -hmm. um, yeah, yes. Or you, you take it so far, but the last little part you're not seeing or you're not quite yeah. knowing what to do yeah. as yeah. well. It can be quite subtle. Um, but, you know, I just, even when I have a headache or if, if I cut my finger or whatever it is, I just always inquire, what is this here to show me, you know, what am I supposed to learn? I just have, I've just been in the habit of doing that because it, it somehow circumvents, you know, a bigger thing happening or it kind of speeds up the healing process. You know, even if I have to go to the doctors, I'll still, to see a doctor, I'll still inquire. Yeah. And thankfully, you know, I've had great doctors who will just kind of often speak as well to that and use that language, which is very unusual. unusual. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be yeah. nice if there were more doctors who did that. Yeah, because I remember some years ago when I lived um, on Grand Bahama and I had a, a UTI, you know, I went to my Polish, little Polish doctor. She was really direct, very frank. And she said, what's pissing you off? And I just started to laugh. I just couldn't <laughs> stop laughing. <laughs> She's, she was so on point, you know. And yeah. uh, I, I, I don't know whether that's the Polish way, you know, to kind of also speak to the energy behind. No, she, I think that that's an enlightened doctor. Yes. Yeah, so anyway. Because I, I think most of them are, uh, you know, God bless them. They do wonderful things, you know, with the physical body, but I don't think they're connecting it in most cases. It's not like one of the courses you take in medical school. Yeah. No, maybe not in yet. The future. <laughs> in the future, maybe it will be. <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's hope so. But um, yeah. you know, I think, you know, if you, if you practice just doing that, whenever there's any sort of condition or, or an emotional upset yeah. or feeling stressed or whatever it is, it really does help alleviate it and it, and it really brings it, it brings very rapid results you know yes. really quickly for sure yeah so so um in terms of your I, i'd like to ask about your training just in case any viewers are sure. interested in joining you for any of your online training to be become a healer yeah. or to learn about healing um how does that work now i do it on zoom so I have a very international, I mean, I'd say more people are in the US, but I have an international student body. So I've had, you know, classes where someone's in Europe, somebody's in India, somebody is in Australia, and everyone else is in the US. <laughs> Time zones are really challenging then, you know, because mm. you're sometimes, you know, whatever. <laughs> yes, um, yes. So, um, so the first thing I'd like to teach is something called um, Awakening Your Light Body. And I love this class because it really connects people to their own energy centers. And it is an awakening because we all have things in our energy. And as you're going through that process, you um, start to realize how much your energy and your life and your body are one. <laughs> it's really, you know, and it's a really deep and intimate course because of this i'm not just teaching a skill set you know where everybody's opening up and mm -hmm. uh, 
coming to a new understanding of who they are and how the world works. And it's just, that's so incredible. Um, and then whoever wants to, um, I teach an advanced course, what I call the graduate level, where we're working with different frequencies that are really building blocks of consciousness. And, um, and in both classes, I start teaching how to, you know, harmonize somebody else's energy, how to do a healing, how to soul link. And then when we get to the graduate level, we're really working with these patterns of energy and light. And it's really, you know, placing radiance into people or situations and, um, and then at the end of that, if people want to continue <laughs> it, it, throughout that process, people are still working on their own, pretty much their own domain, I would say, their own life. Mm -hmm. uh, we sprinkle, we start sprinkling more of working on other people as we go along. And then I teach, you know, long distance healing after that whole process. I mean, I'm teaching it all along. But then we just do long distance healings. So we'll either work on each other, so people in the group or people somebody knows or some situation where we feel. Um, and I guide them through that whole healing process. And then we all discuss what each person experienced. So they get very hands-on, quote, hands-on yes. <laughs> feedback and guidance uh, for a very long period of time in terms of my training. Um, and I hope soon to do uh, another hands-on healing class because that's a wonderful thing to do too. And, you know, the more hands-on healing work you do, the more you can bring that into your distance healing. Like I almost, you know, it's almost the same for me, whether I'm hands-on literally or hands-on distance. Um, and then I'm teaching classes. Um, I have a healing 101 and a chakra class. Um, Alison Dubois, a friend of mine, um, launched a new university, a psychic university. And so I have a few classes there too. And those are wonderful also. And we dive right into uh, hands-on healing at the end of the first class. You know, we're on a video where I show people some techniques. Um, nice. Nice. Yeah. So I'm, I'm sure you find when people do their training with you that they have these kind of huge shifts and epiphanies and realizations that, you know, it's it's clear to them that they're picking up and seeing things that they probably wouldn't have known before or recognized before. You know. Yeah. I mean, you know, sometimes I come back and people are in a completely I mean, you know, not everyone becomes a heel, you know, but hangs mm -hmm. out their shingle and becomes mm -hmm. a heel. But, you know, I, I mean, definitely some of my students have become healers in their actual day-to-day -day profession. Others are using it. I had one person who was a lawyer <laughs> whose partners started asking him to go home and meditate when they had wow. a challenge because they knew he would solve it. Wow. <laughs> you know, they didn't know exactly what he was doing, but, you know, he was right. doing healing long distance. And uh, um, so, you know, you can use, this is the other thing about that, you know, with distance work, right? You know, when you're hands-on, you're hands-on. That's the modality, right? And you're working specifically on whatever that person's issues are. When you're doing distance work, you can work on just about any anything, you know, yes. um, like, you know, I mean, I could do that hands on too. You know, if, I mean, somebody came to me and said, you know, I'm having trouble, you know, closing this deal. I would do a healing about that and work on it hands on yeah. or distance. So, so, and and you do, do you, do you help people like with financial flow or with relationships? And I do all of that. And I've gone through phases where, oh, this is my favorite thing. Oh no, that's my favorite <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. So for a long time and I, i'm actually kind of toying with writing a new book about relationships um but um um yes um because you know where to begin nine times out of ten when somebody is having a problem physically 
it's a relationship issue. Have you, do you know what I'm talking yeah. about? Oh, yes, 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 yes. It's just extraordinary. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Yes. Either that, either a relationship issue or lonely, yeah. a loneliness issue and wanting to find someone. Yeah. That, yeah. You know, yeah. feeling thwarted or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, and um, I love working on business issues. I have one client who is actually the CEO. I'm not going to say what kind of company. And um, but I've worked on, um, you know, different board of director meetings and things like that. And this client has told me that the only time uh, it didn't go well was when this person didn't ask me to do a healing before the meeting wow (laughs) and and this is big big um venture let's just call it a venture you know (laughs) i don't want to be too descriptive and you know um so yeah so you can work on anything as energy and usually it's um you know, something um, in our own psyche that's blocking, that is creating the block. Mm-hmm. I mean, years ago, you know, I hate to say this, but years ago, um, when I was first receiving healings, you know, it was like experiment. I was using myself as a guinea pig. Um, and, um, you know, I had a breakup and, um, and, and, It occurred to me that what did all these people have in common? And the answer was the people I had dated. And the answer was me. (laughs) You know, when you keep, and I call it a, um, you know, like a groove, you know, like in a record, you know, when you have a, like a a skip on a record and every time you hit that same place and most people have that in their life. (laughs) Yes. And um and it can be healed. That's the good news. Yeah, because a lot of that too, um, in many cases, is just stuff that we've in pa- patterns and conditioning we've inherited. And unconsciously, you know, for the most part, you know, especially around, and I can speak from experience, <laughs> around financial issues, because you know, in my in my uh when I was growing up in, in my family, my we had a father that was always saying, "Money's it's hard to make a decent living, and money's hard. Money to doesn't grow, grow on trees, right? Yeah, <laughs> yes. So because you take that on and internalize it, and then it becomes it becomes a truth for you because you believe that, right? So obviously, what yeah. you believe manifests. Yeah, and um, you know, all of that can be very subtle and uh, unconscious, or not, or not unconscious or not. yet, but not so subtle. Right. Yes. Yes. But and, I think it's true with the relationship patterns too. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Especially if you're, if you, if you had, came, you know, parents who were always fighting, or there was divorce, or you know, you're hearing a, your your mother speak badly about your father because he was a cheater, whatever the story is. Yeah. You know, then yeah but be- also, if you had parents who were truly loving, you're more likely to have a, you know, a loving relationship. Mm-hmm. yes you know so it's the positive ad- i mean it's positive yeah, ad- it's you know yeah yeah i even think sometimes people think oh i have this genetic condition i'm not saying there aren't genetic conditions but often it's a pa- an energy pattern it's not mm-hmm. necessarily genetic sometimes it is but it's also um you know i mean you know, people who have high blood pressure, you know, whatever it is, it's because a a way you're running your energy. Yes. And a belief that's passed down as well, you know, because your grandmother had whatever condition, then, you know, your mother's got it and then you'll get it. And so, and and you can really buy into that. Yeah. um, It's just crazy. I mean, I remember some many, many years ago when, when Tony, uh, yeah. went to the doctor because he had a he had some pain in his in his fingers middle fingers you know and the doctor said I, you know I think he was in his early 40s or something the doctor said oh it's arthritis you know it's your age that's your age you know you've got arthritis and you just kind of have to live with it so Tony came back and he was furious he was <laughs> like I'm not buying into that I haven't got arthritis <laughs> I'm not gonna you know 
And um, and I'm glad. I'm glad he had that recognition because it would be so easy to just kind of fall in line with what the doctor's telling you and believe in it and then, you know, create that condition going forward. Um, you know, and he still doesn't have arthritis. So. <laughs> so. <laughs> But, you know, it can be brainwashed into believing that. Yeah, and then you're more likely to have arthritis. Exactly. The doctor said I have arthritis, you know. And then we live up to it, right? And that's what happens. Um, And then we become a victim of it. (laughs) And we (laughs) identify with it and talk about it as my arthritis as a person. You know, and that uh, that language is just very easy to just keep picking up and, and continuing with. Not, and we don't realize what we're doing is we're kind of hypnotizing ourselves. And well, this uh, is, you know, I think this is because, you know, we're, we're, we, we grow up in a, um, you know, uh, the energy of our parents. You know, and we literally gestate, you know right in the second shock or the emotional body of our mother. Yes. <laughs> I mean, you know. <laughs> yeah. And all the generations of, you know, conditioning that have been inherited, yeah. Uh, yeah. held on to and all of yeah. that. So it really does, it, it, it takes courage to break free from all of that, right? It really does. And it's work. It's 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 not so easy, but but the good news is is that when you actually start seeing that and recognizing that, it's then it becomes easier, you know. Yes, yes, and it's well worth the effort. I mean, you're really regaining your freedom. Yes, you know, every layer that you dissolve, you know, is like um, your life expands every single time. I mean, every time I have an epiphany about you know something I wasn't conscious of it's like a miracle and I mean you know for me and I can feel my whole life shift a little bit yes yes um and that that's really incredible it's an incredible thing but it has and it can be quite subtle but it has this really powerful impact on everything right it's just yeah it, it it's really expansive yeah so, so do you want to share are you a little bit about uh, is there anything new that you're working on any yeah. new projects or any yeah you know I want it before I even get into that if we have a minute I wanted to talk a little bit about um you know distance healing you know like it, how real it really is <laughs> okay. oh, yes. Yes, okay. yes. Um, not to you know but there's actually scientific studies and I think people don't realize that. And so I just wanted to mention that, you know, because I used to be a journalist. I still have that kind of, um, I don't, you know, I don't need that proof anymore. Mm-hmm. But um, but it does, um, I'm just going to mention, there was a study that was published in the late 90s, right when I was finishing my book on distance healing and AIDS patients. And so they... Um, nobody knew if they were in the control group or in the um, treatment group because it was all by distance and they never had a conversation with the healers or anything like that. Um, and um, and there are a few interesting things about this, okay? <laughs> One is um, that at three months after, you know, they did treatments for like, I don't know, you know, 10 weeks, um, you know, a certain amount of time a day. And, and then they looked at the results and it, and at three months, there was no difference between the control and the treatment group. At six months, there were significant, statistically significant differences, mood, number of times going to the hospital, number of serious illnesses, days sick, all of that significant differences between the treatment and the control group. So I just wanted to mention that because, you know, I've seen this and I'm sure you have too, where you're working with somebody and it it isn't like everything happens as soon as the shift happens, right? <laughs> it takes time for life to catch up to your energy. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. And um, so I've had lots of people I've worked with. I, I worked with a doctor who was so sick for a while that um, 
they really couldn't work. Um, let's say relationship traumas and childhood traumas it sort of came home to roost. And um, and I would do these healings, and they were long distance, not that it matters. And um, and and she would like be, I don't even know if this is really doing anything for me. I'm still so sick. Da, 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 da. And I said, you know, I said, one day you're going to turn around and, you know, you're going to be working again. You're going to feel good. You're going to be in a new relationship that's happy. And, you know, it'll you won't even realize how much has shifted. And that's exactly what happened. So she went on and on for like, I mean, at least a year or two, like saying, I don't think that I don't know if this is working. <laughs> <laughs> and then her whole life blossomed, right? Because it takes time for everything. Also, you know, it's like a little like a renovation. So, you know, sometimes all the pieces have to come together before, you know, you go forward. So I yeah. just wanted to mention that because that study, but there was something else about that study that I was really significant. And that is, um, there was a gentleman, I interviewed him after my first book came out. I'm just going to show everyone. This is my original book. And if you're interested in science, this is the book. <laughs> if you're not, don't read it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, it has other things in it, but it also has science. Um, but anyway, um, one of the guys who was in the treatment group said that he didn't think he was in the treatment group because he got really sick. He thought he was going to die. And this also can happen. You can have an intense, I hate to say it, but you can have an intensification of everything that's wrong before it releases. Because it comes like you're taking out the garbage. That's when it smells, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, and then he had a turnaround and he suddenly realized everything was okay. And, you know, he was really much happier and you know everything was in his life was better and he got better physically and um you know he he made the point you know like what happens here were people thinking positive things about me sending me positive energy he said what happens if somebody's sending you negative energy I mean, this was a gay man who'd experienced negative energies for being gay mm -hmm. and this, I just want to say this because, you know, it's not just about being a distance healer. We're all affecting everyone else at every mm -hmm. moment. And that's mm -hmm. the piece that I think most of us forget. Like every, I, I don't mean to sound so whatever, but every thought we have about another person really goes to that person. You know? Yes. <laughs> I'm laughing because it's such an enormous thing I'm saying you know? And yeah. um, so we want to be uplifting. Everyone can be a healer in their life. Yes. Yeah. And it's easy to forget that and to think, yeah. you know, you, you don't have an impact. Especially yeah. if you have, let's say you have a relative or a friend who's really ill and you feel like, or they're struggling with a chronic condition. You can often feel like you can't do much, but that you can do plenty with respect to, you know, holding the highest intention for them, send, sending them loving energy, you know, visualizing positive outcomes and all of those things. Yeah. Even if they can't quite see that themselves, you can do that. Yeah. Work. And, and it's helping them even if you can't perceive that. So I, I just wanted to, you know, share that. Um, yeah, you know, good. one of my students, um, this is an amazing story. One of my students, there was a, a girl who was kidnapped and one of my students just felt a real connection to this girl. She didn't know her, you know, young girl, um, minor, you know, and she just kept visualizing that she was going to escape. And nine days later, she escaped. You know, I mean, she was like held captive, you know, in this crazy, you know, God knows what would have happened to her, but she managed to escape and save her life. And, um, you know. Yes. Yes. It does, yeah. it does make, it makes a huge yeah. difference. Yeah. And so, being anyway, so, of that. so about projects, I don't know how much to say. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, um, as much as you feel com com uncomfortable yeah well you know i i have 
big pro I have a big project and then um um I actually just started writing again this week after a very long hiatus. So oh, no. um yeah. So it'll take a while because I my books tend to take a while. <laughs> but it is gonna be about um healing, obviously, and about um relationships and the connection between the two. Wonderful. Yeah. And you have, do you want to just share the books that you currently have? You got them there with yes. you? Okay, sure. Yeah, I do. I have them. So this one is um, my personal experience of um, my transition from being a journalist to being a healer. So like, how do you, how does that happen? This is how it happens. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's a page turner, if I do say so myself. It's a very fast read, people tell me. Yes. And um and and that's just like the, I I originally thought I was gonna write like a trilogy but anyway there's just one of those books <laughs> from the very beginning and this is the book that made me a healer um and again as I said it, there's a lot of um science um I'm looking to show you a picture um but what I'll just say is um. Um, you know, there have been science experiments that show, you know, people's heart rhythms coming into entrainment with each other, um, people's heart rhythms affecting other people's brain rhythms, um, where our energies are always affecting other people. Um, yeah. anyway, that's in this book. Okay. <laughs> and then this book, yes, you can heal is my most recent and it is, um, case studies and guided meditations and ways to think about what you're dealing with, um, and how to heal yourself. Wonderful. So, well, yeah. And they're all available. I mean, on I Amazon okay. and probably okay. Barnes and Noble, you know, online mostly. I mean, you can order it from your bookstore, but Wonderful. in today's world, why, well, you know, I hate to say it, but <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you can just click a button. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, I mean, the whole world has become less um, physically oriented. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's not just. Yeah, yeah with everything. Um, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I've just seen the time. We're getting close to the time okay. to, you know, to, yeah. to time to kind of wrap up. But before we go, excuse me, <clears throat> is there anything you want to share with the viewers that we didn't cover that, you know? Um, yeah, you know, um, I just want to say that um, connecting to the light, connecting to your own self, there's just nothing more important or wonderful to do there really isn't you know so. yeah. yes very good um and they where can people find you oh um diannegoldner.com is the best way um my phone number's on there um a way to email me and you can email me also at diane at diannegoldner.com um and you know nice and you also have a, a youtube channel right you just oh yes i just started <laughs> thanks to your help <laughs> yes i i have a bunch of videos i still need to upload but i've just started my youtube channel and that's at i guess diane goldner or yeah. diane healer um yeah my my 11 year old son is overseeing that <laughs> He's always checking to see <laughs> how many subscribers, whether I have more subscribers than he has. <laughs> I'm sure he gives you tips and tricks, right? <laughs> Lots of tips and tricks. <laughs> yeah, he gave me a few. Him, I wouldn't be doing anything about healing. I'd be doing something about, um, you know, um, stuffed animals or something. Yes, or something. Yes, yeah, something <laughs> whack, wacky or something. <laughs> <laughs> the world through the eyes of an 11 year old right yeah. <laughs> oh it's great yeah. all right well diane thank you so much for joining me again today as it's always 
been an absolute pleasure. I really love every minute. Really, really fun. Uh, it's been great. Thank you so much. Thank you, Julie. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining us today. This has been really great. As always, if you find that this um, episode has value, then please share. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe. So that's all from me and from Diane today. Thank you so much. Take it easy. Be well. And bye for now.